Hello, my art friend. I'm so glad to have you here today in the studio. Today, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to be making greeting cards, all our own personalized greeting cards. And if you're like me, you've always wanted to make your own special personalized cards that you can give to friends and to family. And this is going to be done in watercolor. And I'll be demonstrating for you how to paint a crabby cat on a blue rug. And so we're using these Strathmore Mixed Media cards and calligraphy ink from Windsor & Newton. And this is my first time using the cards and the calligraphy ink, so it'll be a lot of fun. Adding a little bit of water here with just plain water to my watercolor, my dry watercolor pans. And let's get that box open. So these Strathmore Mixed Media cards are 140 pound paper and they're acid free, which means that uh, they are going to stay, uh, they're going to be staying in a good condition for years and years after your recipient gets it. They could frame your uh, card if they like. And um, I'm now taping the paper onto a masonite board. After the drawing is in, I'm going to erase those extra pencil marks so they don't become, uh, they don't show so much uh, with the painting. And uh, using an old paintbrush, uh, wipe off all those extra eraser crumbs. So I'm kind of protecting that top side of the card by covering it with a little rag and then the palette and getting started here with the painting, just the first initial colors. And if you are new to my channel, I welcome you. And if you've come back before, thank you so much for being here. And I hope that you're going to ring that subscription bell. So this is, uh, this whole uh, activity is for the Silver Beard Art Challenge that I'm hosting on my channel. And so I hope you'll get a chance to go out and see all the other artists who have used the same hashtag, Silver Beard Art Challenge, in the title of their video. And I know we're expecting maybe 50 or so artists, so I hope that you'll get a chance to go out and check out everybody else's videos. And there will also be a playlist on my channel uh, in the playlist section with everyone who is participating. One thing on these, um, I like to host these art challenges. I feel like it's a great way, since we're all one art family, to uh, catch up with each other and to support one another. And I think it's a lot of fun to see what everybody does with the challenge prompt. So this challenge prompt was to create artwork in any medium that is featuring a bearded man or featuring the color silver. So I'm choosing to use the color silver and make this little crabby cat and he's just laying on his blue rug and he's just kind of feeling himself. <laughs> kind of a fun little crabby cat. So now getting the Holbein neutral tint. I love this uh, neutral tint. It can act like a gray or act like a black, depending on how diluted it is. And this black velvet um, silver brush it is, um, I really like this brush a lot. It's uh, a mix of synthetic and squirrel hair. That poor squirrel, but he was a noble squirrel and he, he gave his life for the brush. It's kind of sad. I like to think that maybe the, maybe the squirrel was old when, or maybe they were just extra hairs that the squirrel had when they, <laughs> when they made him into a brush, the poor guy. So I'm uh, taking that neutral tint and just kind of, uh, indicating on the paper, now this is a wet and wet technique, meaning that the paper is already wet and dropping color on top. And when we do that, it will give a more diffused look than if it's just dry paper below. Now, if you pre-wet the area that you, um, so I'm pre-wetting, I'm just taking plain water with the brush and getting it wet, and then I can drop color on top, and it will move um, really nicely over the paper. 
So let's get a little bit of this peacock blue here. And the colors that you see here are all um, watercolors that are in tubes. And then you just add water to it each time that you want to paint. It's really convenient. You don't really waste any paint, which is kind of nice. So in my painting today, um, I want to show you how to layer your colors. I'm gonna use many different colors of blue. And uh, here's a French ultramarine. By layering these colors, we get a more complex kind of a color than we would if we would just mix all the blues together and just put it all on one thing. By layering them one on top of the other, a little bits of it will peek through. And I like that complexity. So here I'm uh, softening the edges of our little crabby cat by taking just a brush that just has uh, plain water on it and then running that over and allowing the colors to mingle. Now you can either let your, water, your uh, paper dry naturally or you can use it like a Chandler heat tool I'm using here. You can also use a hair dryer. Uh, people will use different methods to uh, dry in between. But watercolor is all about controlling how wet or how dry your paper is when you put, the pa when you put your paint on. So here I had the paper be bone dry and then when I'm putting this black line on here you'll notice that it's not traveling anywhere it's not moving when we pre-wet the paper and then put color on you can see that the color will just travel everywhere but for example if I had put this black line on here uh, while the green eyes were still drying then that black would bleed into the green but I can uh, I can make sure that it doesn't move by making sure that that paper is super dry before doing it And you might have some favorite cats in your life. Um, we don't have any, my husband and I don't have any cats, but my son and his wife, so my son Will and his wife Mallory, have two wonderful cats, uh, Rotomer Cat and Twisty Cat. And they are just really wonderful cats and so interesting to watch. So now going in with the Hooker's Green, I'm just applying a thick, amount of that and then I can go back in with a damp brush and move the color around where I want it to go so just with a wet brush just pulling that color down there we go You can also see that um, some of the blue, the, um, the blue from above, has been um, moving onto the top of my cat's head. <laughs> and so I'll show you in a little bit how you can wipe that off and um, get the paper back after uh, if, if your paint is gone where you don't want it to go. Here's a, a little bit more of that new gamboge. Now the eyes are dry here, so I can go in and add some detail. And my goal here on this painting, because I think about cats as being feisty and alive and powerful and in this case kind of crabby, I want to have kind of a, a very loose watercolor. I'm trying not to make too tight of a watercolor. I want this to just be very loose and free. So here's the uh, calligraphy ink. And this is my first time using it. So we'll, we'll uh, use it together for the first time. So getting some of it out onto the palette, I shook the jar really well first. And I'm putting the lid back on. So just layering this uh, metallic ink over the areas of the, some of the white areas of the of the paper, and then also where it's been previously painted with the watercolor. I'm coming in now, layering now on top of that, 
You can layer watercolor on top of the ink or um, below or above the ink. So just some more of the uh, neutral tint. Now I got color where I didn't want it, so I'm gonna just take a, a damp brush, a clean damp brush, and just wipe it back off. You can see that that neutral tint looks almost black if it's super concentrated. Anywhere from a light gray to almost black with the neutral tint, it's very transparent. Just putting some uh, some marks and some lines, some gesture lines here. I want this cat to feel expressive. And when you're doing your own painting, then you'll have your idea of how you want yours, the feeling that you want yours to have. adjusting my tray and we'll get a little bit of Prussian blue so now let's move to some darker blues so we get a lot of contrast between the cat which is kind of a middle tone color what I'm, I'm doing now is I'm going to be darkening that background and allowing some of those colors that we first put on to peek through so I did not pre-wet the paper here first just putting kind of a wet wash of color over and applying it in kind of a, just a loose and gesture away so that it will, will just kind of go where it wants to go. Or I guess in this case go where I want it to go because I'm only letting it go where uh, I've pre either pre-wet the paper or where I'm putting the color. So the rest of it is dry and I'm using the heat tool again. And now some of the Chinese white. So Chinese white is a super opaque um, watercolor. You can also use uh, white gouache, but um, this is technically a watercolor that we're using. Gouache, the difference between watercolor and gouache is gouache has the addition of um, chalk and with the and that makes it very, very opaque. Now just layering on more uh, more darks here, getting some of a purple put in. And then coming back and laying on top his fur coat with the silver and I'm using, I want him to look like he is kind of, uh, like his fur coat is kind of wild and going all over. Um, I want this to be a uh, main, uh, main cat the main coon cat they have. Um, they're a little bit more rugged looking than a typical house cat. They tend to be kind of bigger cats and look a little bit kind of wild and they're kind of feisty. Uh, we have some friends, the Antrims, and they had a Maine Coon cat and he was a big guy. I think he was like 30, 30 pounds, something like that. Just a really large cat. So let's go back and restate that eye here, make it just a, you can layer your watercolor um, either with different colors or in this case I'm just putting the neutral tint back on just to make a very dark statement. And then go back in to the center of the eye and get that mark in. And using the liner brush to in the Chinese white, just a quick flick of the wrist to show whiskers and extra hair that are coming off. Now if you notice, I've kind of lost, uh, in all of my excitement of painting, I've lost the chin of my little cat here. So I will show you here in a minute how, what to do if that happens to you. Just get it wet with a paintbrush and then you can try dabbing with a towel, a paper towel kitchen, like a kitchen roll or like an old um, scrap of 
of um, cotton fabric, like an old t-shirt or something. But um, I'm just scrubbing a little bit and then you can restore the white paper where it was before. So now he's, his little chin is back. But you can do that if that ever happens to you and you need to pull an area back again. Now I'm just putting a little water to soften the area above his eyes. All right, now it's time to reveal the edge. Now do you see what a really nice edge that Pro PH uh, Artist Tape. Um, some people will use washi tape, but not all washi tape will give you a nice crisp edge. It depends on the brand. Some are better than others. But this, um, what's also really nice about this tape is that it does not remove any of the paper surface. Nice clean release. So here's our little card. And I'm very happy with how it came up. Let's give a little pinch here at the top to the, to the edge. And now it's ready to write a sentiment and to send uh, to a family member or a friend. But I really like how that silver, this is my, since it's my first time using this silver calligraphy ink, I'm pretty excited in how that silver sheen uh, came out. Those are the envelopes that it comes with, this, uh, this little 5x7. It comes with 10 envelopes and 10 cards. And the envelope is just like regular envelope. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you again in my studio. So until next time, this is Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Bye-bye.